Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bar Belt Speaks. Today yes. is a special Random Thoughts edition because we have guests to be with us while we are having our random thoughts. Yeah. So today we have Miss Sheena and we have Miss Angel. There we go. And you got it right. Yeah, you I did. Said Sheena, I said Sheena. And Sheena. not the, mm-hmm. the other name. Marie. Yeah. Not the love name. The name that has warrants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did not know that was your club name, girl. Back in the day. Back in the day. Well, I mm-hmm. felt like I knew you back in the day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's not forget, Kurt, our mm-hmm. international well-renowned uh, engineer for the last making, two decades. Making things happen. Making it happen. Yeah. And we're at Flux Creative Studios. So. You want to jump right on in? Let's, let's jump in. So the conversation, I know you was about to jump in and speak, but the conversation was going on prior to this mm-hmm. was talking about twin flames, twin flames in relation to relationships. Right. Yeah. So we're going to let Speaks so, talk about um, that. Twin pl- t- planes, twin flames. Uh, uh-huh. They're Get like running rapid. I got this. <laughs> they're running rapid on this planet because it's supposed to um, help humans evolve into their purpose, right? Okay. So a lot of twin flames are coming together. However, because of the backgrounds that we ha- we have and the different brokenness and issues, it's hard for us to stay together. But I want you to explain it more um, because you give like details i know it but it's just like spacey in my mind okay okay i'll so try if you to can, do my best i'm still yes, learning. learning and yeah. that's i guess a part of what twin flames are mm-hmm. um learning about yourself learning exactly. about the process and the journey yeah and um okay so to my understanding you have to take the ego out of it mm-hmm. so the ending which is called the Union Mm -hmm. of the two people who should be together and would work well together, but are not together because of outside forces or maybe even internal situations Mm -hmm. um, are not. So you have to take the ego away from it and not uh, hound the situation or like, I I don't really know how to explain that part because that's the part I'm stuck on. But then, (laughs) then, because if you, if the ego is involved, you'll repel each other away. Right. Um, Right. And then uh, I know when you get together, it's supposed to, uh, the energy is like really, really high and you, and it's intense. And sometimes you have the runner and then you have the chaser. Right. right? So it'll be two magnets coming together coming so it's together. like there's a, a magnetic yeah, connection pool. but it's when you come there you're pushing apart so with that just so let me just say when you talk about that with the twin flames is it dealing with having an understanding of self yeah, it, won't work. it would not work if you don't have an understanding of self and okay. if you're not in alignment with yourself you have if you haven't completed your growth process right. you cannot come together as, as a union you will continue to repel each other away mm-hmm. um, and it gets really intense you know to when you're repelling each other away because you're still kind of yearn for that person right. but because your your soul work is not done it's just no way you could connect yeah. because really the union is becoming one within your with from my understanding the twin flames is it was one soul at once yeah. and then it was a mission on the planet earth that it needed to a uh, male and a female to complete so the soul divides itself to go to the planet now, so the, the gender to my understanding does not make a difference uh, this can this okay. can be any type of love true love right. uh-huh. connection right so i don't think like the it's, gender it's a male or female it doesn't matter yeah. if it's okay. or female, male, female, male, female male. it uh-huh. doesn't any of those things don't matter it right. just has to be two <clears throat> humans mm-hmm. who genuinely and truly love each other yeah. but can't i like how you together. specify humans yeah <laughs> yeah. Stay yeah yeah but um yeah, it is. so because because we had the conversation so myself and speaks were talking about it the other day when we was having a meeting about that discovery of self and when you don't truly have an understanding of who you are as an individual mm-hmm. that creates turbulence when you try to have a relationship with someone because you're then you're trying to um like fill voids within yourself by pulling that out of that individual and you can't if you're not happy with who you are no one can fulfill that until you reach that within yourself with the unique twin flame theory Mm -hmm. 
the two people, the two separate people who are connected, like emotionally, mentally, and and sometimes even physically, Mm -hmm. they push each other to become a better person. So when you're working on yourself, you're also working on whomever your twin flame is because you mirror each other until you all get to a point in which you Mm -hmm. say, we have walked this journey together for X amount of years and um, something is holding us together. We're not sure what it is, Mm -hmm. but we know that it's special and we're not going to let it go. That's what ultimately kind of happens to my understanding. I am not there yet. Yeah, because we still, reading and we're working on it but um speaking on you know not you not knowing who you truly are i want to go into like marrying at a young age which i know that we us three we did that um and how we didn't know who we were in that process and how that affected being in a relationship if you know Mm -hmm. anybody want to jump in and talk about that I know for myself I can let people know that I am divorced um, because it it was hard for me to stay in the marriage and learn who I was as an individual because I didn't know who I was I went from uh, graduating high school going to college meeting him and then getting married right out of college and then bam I'm pregnant so I'm giving all of myself away I did when I say I'm finding myself I'm really truly finding myself and finding out what I like and what I don't like because I didn't never take that time because For I was yourself. Yeah. right because I was pouring into <laughs> the relationship trying to fix them instead of yeah. fixing myself but you know we talked about that society pushes that at a young age to get into the relationships and it's it's more focused on being in relationship than it is focused on having an understanding of you mm-hmm. as an individual in so now itself. you're trying to discover who you are and yeah. you're dragging this person through the ups and downs of your discovery mm-hmm. as one week you feel like this the next week you feel like that and, and but you're growing but through all those changes this person is either going to accept Mm-hmm. As you're going through all of that, mm-hmm. or they're going to have some pushback because they're growing too. They're evolving at the same time. Mm-hmm. So now uh, you might come to a point to where the two of you are no longer aligned at yeah. that. And so, it, but that's when it comes down to two individuals understanding that there's nothing wrong with um, being an individual. And I think sometimes that's what's missing is that we don't appreciate each other for just being an individual and having an understanding that I think this way, you think a certain way. And there's no right or wrong with that. Right. It's just that the lens we're looking through is mm-hmm. going to be different. And it's supposed to be. We're not clones mm-hmm. one of you know each other. And, you know, we had that discussion before yeah. where that's the problem. Too many times everyone wants to say, well, I feel like this. So I want everyone to feel like this. Even when you get to religion, you know, this is what I believe in. So you need to believe in this Mm -hmm. Mm because this is the only path that needs to be taken. And that's just not true. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that creates, you know, disturbances within a relationship. And once you reach and I think that's when it goes back to when you was talking about the twin flames. Mm -hmm. If you're building together because there's an understanding and that goes back to the discussion we were having when I was talking about. Um, there is no, in my opinion, no such thing as unconditional love. There's always conditions within it. Mm-hmm. No matter how small and minute it might be, there's some type of condition within it because as individuals, we have things we like, we have things we don't like. Mm-hmm. So within that, um, even though I love you and care about you, mm-hmm. there's going to be things you do at times that just pisses me off. Right. But th- within that condition, I'm willing to, you know, stay in it. So let's um, stop right there because I want to go back, like, okay, relationships at a young age. Uh-huh. But I do want to touch on the unconditional because me and you had that conversation yep. and she agrees with you. And me and you had that conversation. Well, obviously, and me and you was on the me same Me and she not right. I'm uh, just gonna see, put that yeah, on yeah, the I, table. I thought it was no right or wrong. It's like <laughs> what, in what this situation, in this. <laughs> it's right. It's for practice perspective, and now it's right or wrong. Right. But I do want to talk because we all. I think it was you. You was married young too, right? And my baby yeah, is out I there. I'm sorry. Young too. Yeah. Um, uh, so right. you didn't want to put me into that. I'll just settle. <laughs> I, that's why I was just in my mind. I was like, wait, you married young too? Yeah. yeah so I think because of society. That is the what it, we it kind of get pushed, especially when uh, there's pregnancy involved. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's being pushed, like, oh, you need to do this, not having an understanding that. 
two people can still be successful mm -hmm. without having that stamp of being married on there because you're young. Because like, oh, what is it? Your, your mind is not fully developed to make life-changing decisions right. to the age of 27. Right. So now you're a young um, male or female trying to make decisions that are going to impact your life and this other individual's life. And you don't even have a true understanding of who you are mm -hmm. because you're still growing because your your life experience is shallow. Mm -hmm. You haven't lived long enough to have an understanding. You haven't been in the world. You're just coming out of high school. You're in college. Mm -hmm. And college is that next step. And so what we consider the, the world and mm -hmm. experience in the world because now, you know, it's more ownership. Right. On you Responsibilities. As exactly. Yes. So. Yeah. So if we're going to let you, I'm sorry, we will get the yeah, rambling. We'll get it going. So y'all so got back it. to <laughs> young relationships. Yes, okay. the young relationships. Um, yes. Do you want to? It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> I, I was young-ish. I was actually 28 when I got married. Okay. okay. Um, so I wasn't ready. Yeah. I thought I was. Mm -hmm. You know, um, me and my husband, we dated in college for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I I went abroad for a little while, so I was gone for about five months. Okay. And when I came back, things were a little different. But you know, I was it different because you viewed things differently. Because having that experience studying abroad, it feels like it would change. No, okay. that wasn't it. Okay. okay. It was it was sexual. Ah. So I made a choice that I was going to wait until marriage. And I told mm -hmm. him up front, I said, if you ever feel like this is something that you can't deal with, don't cheat on me. Just break up with me. Mm -hmm. You know? And when I came back, he was like, you're acting all needy. And I was like, well, I haven't seen you in five months. What do you mean? You know? Right. And he was pretty much getting to that point where it's like, hey, it's been two and a half years. You know? What's the deal? Because um, I made a deal with myself. And I kept changing the deal. I wanted to ask you, uh, your choice to wait until you, you was married, did that come from par uh, your parents or is this something that you just came up with it? I wish I could say that it was religious, but okay. it wasn't. It was mm. fear. Ah. It was fear based. Um, when I was I in like high school, that. I didn't want to be that girl, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to wait until college. And then when I got in college, I said, well, I'm going to wait until I'm in a committed relationship for at least two years. Well, mm -hmm. we got to that point. And, you know, he was thinking, okay, I put in a couple of years. I was yeah. good, you know. And it still didn't happen. Well, I made a new deal with myself. Didn't communicate that deal. Uh -huh. um, until a little later in the relationship, I was like, you know, I've made it this long. I think I'm going to, I want to wait for marriage. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't something he could handle at the time. So he broke up with me. Went to Myrtle Beach, had his little fun with his girl whose name I won't say. TT. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just say she was a snow bunny, right? Uh -huh. so, Pink toes. <laughs> he took his snow bunnies to the beach. I'm so sorry. Not the mountains. <laughs> but um, yeah, he, he went with her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then the next week he tried to come back. And I'm not going to yeah. play that game. So we didn't communicate for two years. Ah. And he kept sending his friends around like, why you won't talk to my boy and stuff like that. And, you know, there was just that space. And finally, I was able to forgive him, you know, let it go. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up reconnecting with him. And when I reconnected, he um, we went out a few times, you know, and he told me he had a baby on the way. And initially, I was, I was kind of hurt, you know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> he was excited. He's telling everyone, "Hey, I've got a baby coming." Everyone's like, "Sheena, Sheena, it's pregnant." And it's like, "No." So you know, he's got to explain the situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, long story short, we end up reconnecting, getting back together, getting married. Um, but the second go around, I wasn't playing, you know, mm -hmm. society didn't make me feel like I had to get married. Mm -hmm. I was just, my thing is, and y'all can say whatever y'all want, mm -hmm. but men, when men say they don't know what they want, when people say they don't know what they want, it's a lie. Everyone knows what they want. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like for men, when men say they don't know, it's a stalling mechanism so that they can do whatever for the time until mm-hmm. they are ready. Mm-hmm. And so they are. <clears throat> um, huh? What, what you think about that one? <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends because it's always going to be from individual to individual. Mm-hmm. So I'm one who I never place an umbrella over all people. So I every um, relationship, I treat each one separate. So this woman is going to be completely different than this woman, even though there might be some similarities in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Those similarities are those triggers that you have to shy away from, because just because something seems similar doesn't mean that person is is the same as this next person. It has to be a fresh. You have to step into it fresh. It's almost like if you think about the song uh, by Erica Badu talking about um, um, bag lady, you know, you don't Mm -hmm. carry those bags. Mm -hmm. And, you know, each uh, as you move forward, you know, you have to release all of that. You have to let that go. Mm -hmm. Um, But I would say. I'm one who is direct. And if I say that um, I'm not sure what I want, I'm being completely honest. I'm not sure what I want. Mm-hmm. Some people might say they not. And that's why you have to take it per individual. Mm-hmm. Some people might say that and maybe they are, but they want to explore before they settle down. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, they just need to communicate that. That's not an easy communication with someone that you are that you care about because you're taking into consideration of how they're going to react and respond to that. And for me, I, last year I knew I did not know what I want. I didn't know. Like I was really honest with myself. I couldn't tell you what type of person I wanted to be because I didn't know me. So I didn't, I I really did not know what I wanted. If if you you don't know who you are, it's kind of hard to nail down what you want because you're still exploring. It's almost, if you think about absolutely, uh, just because we are quote unquote adults, we are still almost like children who are just coming into the world and everything, Mm -hmm. they're exploring everything. They're figuring out what happens when I do this, when I touch this, what happens when I go over here what happens adults are the same way especially for some people who have not done much with their life and now all of a sudden they're stepping into a world where they can explore more and do things now they're getting out there and they at one point thought to me it's like you 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 can't corner someone and say just because you felt like this yesterday you should feel like that today okay okay because we're always growing. There shouldn't be a ceiling on that. But within that, there has to be communication. You know, it's that old saying communication is key. Right. You know, you have to be having those conversations. And if the individual knows they're not ready, they have to communicate that. And I can say, you know, being married for 16 years and um, yeah, it's a long time. It's a long time. And yeah. coming out of that, it, it, it's scary and emotional and you don't know what you want. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't, So it's it's possible to be an adult with kids and you, you're you just like naive and you're gullible because it's a new world for you. You know, so you do have to explore to find out what works for you, what don't work for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when I say, uh, well, now I kind of know, you know what I'm saying? It's going on two years. So I'm like, oh. Okay, okay, this has to, we got to grow together. You know what I'm saying? I know that we got to build some shit together because I like to take on different projects and build. And then we got to have sex a lot. So that's my whole, <laughs> my, so those are my three things that I have right now. And then I add on to it, you know, but it's nothing like, like, I don't need you to make six figures. Da, 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 da. Like, it's nothing like that those pieces but I know what I like to do and you don't want to get with an individual that becomes resentful because you like to build or you know what I'm saying like you're in the community community building and stuff like that so it's just things that you look for in a partner but yeah when that you're, when mm-hmm. you said that statement like and you think everybody do know what they want I know what food I want when I want to eat I know you know mm-hmm. what I want to wear you know what I'm saying or how I want to look but as far as uh, building a relationship with someone I'm still building a relationship with myself so it's just no way that I could just be like oh I need this that, 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 that. you know I'm exploring so yeah if that make any sense I think I'm just built different 
Yeah, you might. Like yeah. yeah, different perspective. But that's the that. that's the indivi- uh, you know the yeah. individuality. Mm-hmm. Like you, you there's nothing wrong with having your perspective it's, it is on not. things, yeah. and that's the where the appreciation comes in. Like you're supposed mm-hmm. to, your lens is not going to be the same as my lens, mm-hmm. and that's where it goes back to. Just because I see it a certain way and you don't see it that way doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong or you're right and I'm wrong. It just means we look at it two different ways. So when you're looking to align with someone, you're looking to align with someone who lens is similar to yours because then the two of you are going to grow together. Mm -hmm. It's still there's nothing uh, as far as within it that's going to be perfect because we're emotional creatures just by nature. Mm -hmm. So within that, there's days where I'm going to be higher than other days. Can you deal with those days where I'm at a lower point? Can I deal with the days when you're at a lower point? You know, that's where we have to have uh, that empathy and compassion for one another. It can't just be the way I want it the whole time. It can't just be the way you want it the whole time. And sometimes that, to me, again, is completely subjective, um, just my opinion. That's what um, disrupts relationships because someone is always trying to be that alpha in a relationship instead of understanding a relationship is management. You're managing this partnership between two people, meaning you should always be trying to meet in the middle. And to meet in the middle means there's compromise from both individuals. Mm-hmm. So I'm giving, uh, I'm giving up something, you're giving up something. But we're doing that because we have a goal of what we're trying to achieve within this. I'd like to go back to when you said about care. Mm-hmm. I'd like to know your opinion on what men mean when they say care versus love. I care for you versus I love you. What so, is that about? I can, um, <clears throat> I can speak for me. I, I can't speak for all men. But I know um, saying I care for you is almost on the level of um, friendship. Okay. If when I say there's love there, that means there's something more than just the friendship. That's there. It's almost like a family member that you love. Mm-hmm. Um, to where even if you do certain things, I'm still going to be there for you. When I just care about you, I might, um, you know, that there might be an absence in communication for a while uh, because you did something. And I'm just like, ah, I just can't deal with this person for a while. It doesn't mean that I'm completely removing you. It just might mean that for this period of time, I need some distance between the two of us. Uh, If I love you, then... There's always it's always an open channel that's there for me and this individual. Um, and but to be honest, as I'm talking through it, that, that they're similar. It's just that there is there's a fine line between it. And it's always going to be based on the individual. And all of that to me is always going to be based on your experiences. As you've grown up, Mm -hmm. not just, you know, when you think about nurture versus nature, it's not just biologically what's within you based off of your two parents, because we all carry, you know, each one of us, we're 46 chromosomes. So we made 23 from a mother, 23 from a father. Mm -hmm. So we're built on that. But within that, we become individuals as we grow within the world. And then based off of what's surrounding us, we experience those interactions. And then that determines how we um, start to perceive things. Right. Um, so my definition of love might be different than your definition of love. Mm-hmm. And it's based off of what I experience. It doesn't mean that it's right and, or, or wrong. It just means based off what I've gone through, this is how I look at love. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say when it comes to a relationship, it has to be someone who kind of aligns with you. Because mm-hmm. if you meet someone, they might be a beautiful person. You see it in them. Mm-hmm. But the way they view certain things, especially when it comes to love, mm-hmm. they might have had an extremely turbulent experiences growing up for what love was for them, the way they were treated and the way love was being used with them. So now their perspective on love is going to be different than yours. And so now do you treat them harshly because they don't have an understanding of your type of love? Mm -hmm. And so now that's when we get into, well, my love is right. Your love is wrong. Mm -hmm. And now, again, we get into that um, pointing the finger. And, you know, what the the saying is when you point the finger, you got three pointing back at you. It's it's, it's like you have to be more aware of you than the individual. Mm -hmm. And I think when if people were more um, understanding of who they were, like, 
at this point, I know who I am. I, I know the good. I know the bad. Within that, it allows me to maneuver and navigate at a higher level. As I was still developing those things, whoever I interacted with, they is almost like I was dragging them through that those experiences as I was learning. So mm-hmm. some people might have a really great experience with me. Others might not have had such a good experience with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's because I was constantly growing and evolving. Mm-hmm. Um, so depending on what point of um, time that you interacted with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just it's just one of those things where I, I, I don't think we could ever truly kind of nail down. This is the definition of what love should be. This is a definition of what a relationship should be. Because as I tell Speaks, there's no blueprint to any of this. Mm-hmm. Like life is not there is no manual that says this is how life should be lived, even though I know people, you know, reach to the Bible and other things, you know, but there is no true. There is no breakdown to say mm-hmm. when you get to age 10, this is how you should be acting. When you get to age 15, this is what you should be doing. When you reach 21, these are how the decisions you should make. This is the choices you should make because we're so different, yeah. you know, as individuals and our differences are all based off of experiences and i would like to chime in because growing up um my father he was very clear to let me know that it's a lot of men that's out there that's not raised in a two-parent home so do not ever have expectations of them treating you a certain type of way because i'm treating you this type of way like he was very very clear of like how we view different people like you have to accept them for for where they are and the only reason why he could come from that space is because his father wasn't there so he understood that he was raising us differently you know what i'm saying um and you remember we was talking about was it a benefit or or not being raised in a two-parent home because when you're raised in a two-parent home your your lens is really completely different but the reason why i could be so nonchalant about certain situations which you kind of know how i am more so than you do sheena but i'm just like okay what happened like it just accept you know acceptance is everything and da 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 because that's my father is still that in me to let me know that everybody's uh, upbringing is not gonna matter of fact it's gonna you might be like five percent you know what i'm saying and then you're not i don't want you to be in that situation where you're looking at these men to be me and so I, I understood that. And so going forward in my life, I really would try to um, accept people for who they are. And so this is where unconditional love comes in for me. And I know y'all was saying, you know, you don't believe. So this is where I took that on. It's because for me to operate in from a space where I felt like I was receiving unconditional love from my parents. Like, I really, f- like, you can't tell me that they're going to love me unconditionally. I feel like if I murder someone, they will hide me. And like, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, it's nothing that I can do and I can't just go home. So I, that, for me, that is my definition of unconditional love. And so when they instill that in me, that's how I view a lot of people that I care for. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do away with you. Because I understand we all got our shit, you know, and but if I say I care for you or I I love you, then I really like whatever you do, you could really come to me and I'm going to be like, okay, let's, you know, talk it out. You know, it's it's like I even like still love my ex-husband. It's like like it's still love there. So I don't um, the unconditional love thing. It's really weird for me. But I do understand when I heard what you were saying. And when I heard what you were saying, I really understood it. But I think because of my upbringing and that feeling that I received, that's why I kind of like, oh, I don't know. I think I just accept people for who they are. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Because if I didn't, yo, I wouldn't be able to be in any relationship if I didn't accept people for who they are. Because nobody could compare to, it's hard to compare to the upbringing that I had. You know what I'm saying? I will always be judgy and like, uh uh-uh, uh, you're not good enough or you're not good enough or, you know, but everybody is good enough. Everybody's a, a beautiful uh, soul and we're all here having different experiences. So that's why I'm just gonna let you do what you do. And then I have to cope with myself and find um, things within me that make it okay like if that makes sense so what you said about your dad not having a two-parent home Mm -hmm. he made a conscious decision 
when he had a family mm-hmm. to make sure that, you mm-hmm. know, that did not happen again. Yeah. And that was a strong move. And I think that if more people had that conscious decision uh-huh. to make the difference, it will change a whole generation. If that makes sense. It would. No, it does. It but does. It, and that comes with some education within that. Mm-hmm. But again, what one person possesses, the next person doesn't possess. You no, know, the, but yeah. we always can and his work. was fear based too. I mean, the the reason why he just decided to stay was fear based. So like he would definitely let you know that he, first of all, he didn't want girls because he understood that you know, especially if you're attractive, then you're gonna attract attractive men and he understood the dynamic because he used to want to be a pimp he'll tell you he grew up <laughs> he grew up all his the males in his family they was pimps and so he grew up with that whole mindset where's my uh, money yeah yeah so he knew he knew all of that so it was all fear based you know and and, not, and fearful yeah, of be- I still have that desire <laughs> to be the pimp right I think about that I'm about like, to let my pinkies crazy. grow I'm about to <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so it, I think it was out of well, I know it was out of fear because he had, yeah. he has told me before that it was out of fear that he decided to stay but um he said it's the best decision that he's ever made in his life because of the woman that my mother grew into mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so he was like if he would have decided he said it was everything in me to choose other things than to go astray um but that the fear that I had of my girls not being able to make wise decisions or uh, that fear that I had that um, that I would be a womanizer because he used to say that he always when he was younger he would always have dreams of being a womanizer to women like being really really mean to women Mm -hmm. and he didn't want that to be his future he would have this these dreams when he was a little boy vivid dreams when he was a little boy so anyway so that played into the his whole role into staying and his whole role into teaching us and his it, that all played into who i am right now today so i can't say it was fear-based but he did he's very grateful of his decision but it was fear-based Go ahead. And then I want to ask do you all feel that care can transition into love I kind of think it's the same thing. He was describing it as two different scenarios. I know, but that's him. I was yeah. like, it's I kind of, it's, like, it's like, it's yeah. like, yeah, for individuals, so, it's different. Yeah, yeah. I kind of think it's a, uh, the yeah. same thing. I can't, I can't separate care and, 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 cause I don't, I ain't gonna care for you. I, I ain't, I'm gonna have to love you to care for you. Put it like that. Okay. Like I, I have no, <laughs> I don't have that capacity to just care for what you're doing, what you're going through. Da da da. If I don't love you, right. So to ask you all the question, um, <laughs> when it comes to keep it, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you had a point. Love versus like. Yeah. Both four letters, but completely mm-hmm. different. different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now, right. now, like I could like you. I like it better. I like saying like better than care. Now, I could like you as a person, but until I get to know you, you know, I'm not going to have no care for you or nothing. Well, so, so care is more love. associated with love then? I think so. And then maybe like is, you know... You can yeah, I'm gonna get to right. I'm gonna get to know you a little bit better. You, you know, love someone and not, and not like, like them. them yeah, because that's what I was gonna say. I, I feel like that's something but that's, that's usually missing. family members yeah, well it, but, but that's just from one person yeah. that's just from one angle of it yeah in relationships people stay with each other because they're like I, you know i love them mm-hmm. but they don't like them like they argue all the time they, they, they yeah you know I and like when ass. you ask them they were like no nah, but i've been with them for so long you know and i love them like what else am i going to do but they don't like them and to me Mm-mm. like is extremely a huge part of it. I, I need to like I who agree. you are as a person person exactly overall every day all day Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we agree on everything but i need to like you yeah like i need to like your energy has to be what is you know always constantly pulling me in and so but but let's get Mm -hmm. like you always point on that as far as when you in a relationship with dylan i ain't gonna lie i go through phases Uh like i love my husband some days i don't like him yeah some days i'm like (laughs) I what think is that's wrong what with your thought about, process? Uh, 
Yeah. Marriage does that. Yeah. yeah. Falling in and out of love. Yeah. I mean, there's the love, but there's not always the like. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I like him right now. We're good. Uh-huh. But some days I don't like him. Yeah. Some days I'd be like... Do you not like what he do or him as the person? Like, I cannot um, like what you're doing. Certain actions, I would say. Yeah, that. so it's not him as the person. Like, I, I just can't. But, you know, actions over a period of time become character. Okay, well, then I don't like yeah. you after that. But there's, you know, you can you see know? a trend. Right. You like know, if, if you have a, history with them. If you have certain patterns, and I'm good at picking up patterns. Right. <laughs> I think I was great in school when it came to patterns, you know what I'm saying? But... I'm good at picking it up. And if you have a certain one over and over again and I don't like it, I don't like you. Wow. Yeah. So let me ask you both. Yeah, I don't um, like you. When you look at marriage, what, what, what is your take on marriage? Do you think it's a necessity for a successful relationship? I never really thought about that. I mean, mm-hmm. for me personally, I when I was single and I dated, mm-hmm. I didn't just date for long you know because my thing is if i'm dating i can date this guy this guy this guy you know and i make it clear when i was dating i would be like okay let's just make this very clear if we're just dating i may date you monday i may date him wednesday right Mm -hmm. you know um but i prefer to be in a committed relationship Mm-hmm. And guys don't like to hear that you're dating other guys when they're dating you. So they'll be pretty quick to make it official. Mm-hmm. Most. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, it, I guess it depends. Yeah, on that's person. how I got caught up in college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was saying, you know, I just don't want you to get upset if you see me out with other men and da da da. You know, making it clear. Mm-hmm. And then he was, he, he, yeah, oh, well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, do, do you think that the relationship can sustain longevity without the stamp of marriage on it? Or do you feel like to be with someone for a long time, as far as to the end of life for either one of you, you have to be married? For me personally, that's what I wanted. Okay. So, there was no gray area. Um, I don't like to live in the gray. I mm-hmm. like things to be pretty clear, black and white. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's just not how the world is. There's a huge gray area, right? you know, but I try to minimize my gray, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then my follow up so question. So things are clear. Yeah. So because marriage is, it was created by us. So it was, it's man-made. It was, you know, in the early stages, it was all about a contract between, you know, what could be beneficial for both families. So if marriage was never put into action, then, you know, and I'm asking in a way, and, and just let me know if I need to rephrase it, but if that was never an option, if marriage was never a part of the concept or the idea of longevity with a relationship, then would that be because it's because it's is pushed and it's constantly talked about, you know, you get engaged, you get married, you know, even before diamond rings wasn't even part of the process. Mm -hmm. It was because diamonds uh, were not generating enough sales. So they start promoting it as, Oh, when you get engaged, the woman should get a ring. And then that started being pushed on. So in the early stages, when marriages were first being done, there was no such thing as a ring being part of the process. It was just that contract between two families. So if that was never part of it, and that's where I, I feel like that's where society plays a strong role in that creating that mindset for us because they established that. Mm-hmm. And if that wasn't there, then could you just be, because I'm hearing you say, you know, personally, this is how you feel, but is that personal feeling based off of what has been, right, conditioned, taught, programmed, what's been fed to you and could you step out of that without thinking it would be um, wrong? That's a good question. Hmm. So if marriage did not exist. And that's um, you too. Would I be (laughs) okay? Yeah. Um, I need a verbal agreement. I need some kind of agreement. Okay. You know, I, I don't like the gray. I don't like wondering this or that. I like to know what's what that commitment mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because and, and i say that too because um that stamp of of saying we're married doesn't change infidelity it no doesn't. 
I'm know. trying to tell you. So well, just, just because we're saying with myself. Mary, <laughs> marriage is still a relationship between two people. So there's still the same um, turbulent times that you have if you're just boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You go through those same things. Mm -hmm. But you just got the contract and, and you got the paper. Yeah. And that's what I had a problem with when I decided to leave my marriage. And I had to go through the, you know, the courts to... Um, get my name back, everything, you know, and I have to pay them. So I, di I didn't agree with the whole process. And I'm like, why did I, why did I even involve, you know, this, the, the state into my relationship or in my decisions in my life? They have nothing to do with it. But you it's know, encouraged. It's it promoted is. Because yeah. you get benefits. Exactly. So, it's a status. Yeah. That's it's a status. why it I got married. It, it was a status. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long, if you don't mind me asking, how long were you married? I was we married for say. a very long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was coming here, in my mind, I was thinking like w whether I was going to talk about what's going on in my personal life like that. And I've decided for the comfort of the other party mm -hmm. not to discuss it because I hadn't really talked to him about what I was doing today. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um I'm not going to discuss that part. Yeah. Okay. But in my personal opinion, um, I feel like it would have been better had we not gotten married and just was together. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. So I. I uh, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Too. And, and we were together for over 20 years. Okay. And yeah. I was married when I was like 22. Okay. So yeah. it's been a long time. Yeah. So you think the the shadow or the cloud of marriage disrupted the relationship? I think the shadow and cloud of social media disrupted marriage. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to be a part of marriage ever again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was well I, said. I, I, yeah. I and I, I've heard that too. They talk about that a lot with social media now. How. Mm -hmm. Things are um, people have uh, idea of things based off of yes. what they're saying on social media. It's the devil. It's not okay. the devil, but <laughs> everyone <laughs> cannot afford it's Miss My Mister Miami or whatever because the image of these women that you're working against, you cannot compete with what they're willing to do for nothing for a like. But they don't even have to be on social media. No, they. Well, I was going to say you can walk them. out the no, no. door, and yeah, no, no, no. we all got on short shorts because, and tight pants, and it's just booty and ass, but because, tits and asses everywhere. So, <laughs> because social media is there, and that like button does something to our brain when we're out on the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, you get those girls that want to be like the Insta model girls or whatever, yeah. and they will do. And what? men know that, that men know that I'm going to like this picture and then she's going to, you know, feel like, you know, she's right. thinking about me. So I, I can't stand that with, cause like if I'm posting a picture and then all of a sudden, you know, my DM is like, bing, 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 you know, and I'm just like, he's you song me yesterday when I put a post of my event that's going on in your ass then like yeah. that shit. But <laughs> Social media. I've been off of social media for eight months behind wow. the um, disgust. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. I am disgusted with social media. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely different. It, <laughs> I, I wanted to touch on you was talking about with that with me because you also had to take into a fair, and I'm not agreeing or disagreeing, but uh, when you have other women who are doing that and men DM them and it leads to some then of course they start to say oh here's another picture similar yeah. to that so let me yeah. hit this one up and see what happens mm -hmm. um so it's all about um uh, with men it's almost like playing the numbers and just seeing what comes, what out. comes out because men it's are always the the chasers anyway yeah. you know for the most part men are the, are the ones chasing after the woman yeah. it's the it's dopamine it. effect it's yeah. a drug but, yeah, but I, I, I do know i have met a, a lot of women that they like they have they're chasers and they love it and they but our chase is different our chase is with the imagery and the put, you know, the get made traps. up and yeah, that's the that's the a way. chase. There's traps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like I'm no, I'm gonna bait you in to yeah. do the like. I'm gonna bait you in, so it's on both sides. Like I was thinking the other day, I was like, damn, I don't want to be prey, but then I realized I was like, we're both prey. 
we're preying off of each other. Uh, we have lost. It's just like at the human condition. We're just kind of like, uh, we, we're trying to figure this shit out. So, um, but I have realized that it's on both ends. It's on both ends. We are chasers and they're chasers. And then sometimes, you know, it disrupts a whole household, unfortunately. It Social does. media gets to the point in which you can swipe left or right and link up with people. Like, yeah. that is... Yeah. I can't but I grasp think, that concept I think that's yet. a wonderful thing because I do have friends that linked up and now they're in a wonderful relationship um, through that avenue. So it is what you use it for. Now, it's a lot of people out there that just have bad intentions, you know, right. um, and, you know, even for women, well, both, you know, sometimes we're just toys to each other. You know, I just need this fix. You, you're the toy. Da, 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 da. But I mean, it's on, I swear it's on both ends. At first, it was kind of one sided because I am a woman. But mm-hmm. then when I'm out here and I'm just listening, it's just like it feels like it's on both ends. And uh, when this one guy told me I was the one percent, I remember I was telling y'all that mm-hmm. I was like, ladies, we are the one percent, you know, um, <laughs> so you know, I don't choose to conform into that, but it's okay. I'm not, no, I used to, I was kind of upset. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I'm out here in these, in these streets and it's just, I'm just going to be by myself. Then I had to work on, well, what's wrong with being by yourself? You know what I'm saying? Like that I had to go through the, down that road. Then when I, you know, was okay with, okay, I could be by myself. And then I had to um, realize that, I just got to continue to explore what works for me. It doesn't mean I have to conform into what they're doing and what's going on, but you just have to find out what works for me. But I know in your situation, it's scary because it's, it was very scary for me. Yeah. It was very scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's a the whole new world. And then you feel like it's disrupting what you are used to or what you feel like that is the norm for you. I don't even know if I was supposed to be used to it or I made a fantasy world in my mind uh-huh. of what I saw of my parents doing. And that goes back to the two Super parent home. home. I only saw my parents working together and establishing something for their children. That's it. I never saw my parents do anything crazy or unusual or disrupt the household. And I'm sure that they have had their differences, but it never disrupted our household. I've only saw um, loving, caring relationships. So when I jumped out there into this ugly world... (laughs) Mm-hmm. I was consumed <laughs> yeah. and I was scared and I still am scared. Um, I've only had one relationship in my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. And um, now we are at differences. And uh, what I'm seeing out there is uh, not appealing. It's not. And I, I'm probably <laughs> going to be That's why I was like, by girl. myself. Oh. <laughs> And I'm prepared for that. I got a little Yorkie and everything. Like, I'm so cute. <laughs> yeah. So, me and my dog. Yeah, just me and my dog. <laughs> tell me I need to get a dog. It's I like, know, I yeah, tell Tiffany like, all the time dog. because <laughs> my pet really takes a lot of the worry and the time that I would spend on why I'm not getting a call not, back yeah. or this or that or da, da, da. I don't want to play the game. I'm out. Yeah. I'll just. Walk my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know it was a game either. Like I can remember over a year ago. I think th- well, this is how this show started. Was the texting game um, when I first went into this whole new world. Uh, one of my other home girls was like, "No, don't text back quickly. You have to wait a certain amount of times." So I'm like, "What? I'll be. I'll play games. What are you talking about?" But from her perspective, it was you had to conform and play this game i need to know where the rule book is for this game because i do not know where it is and i i'm bad at this game and i no longer want to play (laughs) wow wow i'm not (laughs) (laughs) look okay so at first i was like i'm not playing the game so um but there's a and i didn't really think it was a game really but now I'm like, yo, yeah. it's a whole game. Yeah. Like yeah. from my perspective, it's a game. And I don't I'm not playing your game. But guess what I do? 
play the game. No. What do you do? I create my own motherfucking board and create my own motherfucking game. Okay. That's what I do. Because I don't be conforming to nobody else's game. <laughs> see, that's the thing. Nobody want, no real woman wants to conform Mm-mm. to... You no, know, what do I look like? I'm like, I'm like I don't say oh. and this and that. Like, I don't want to play your just, game. Uh, the texting thing, I don't agree with, but there is a respect game. Mm-hmm. There's a res- no, that's a respect game. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you mean? I mean, like, okay, it depends on how you want to live. Well, it depends on how you want to live. For me, I like that. My grandmother um, was big in my life as a child. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't grow up in a two-parent household. I grew up in a house with my grandparents, my mom, my aunt, my first cousin. Until I was about seven, I thought Dad just visited you on the weekends, you know? Ah. And I mean, Daddy came through, you know? He opened the door and everything. I knew how to date because I had Daddy dates, you know? But, yeah, I was seven when I realized when somebody told me their dad stayed at home with them. And I was like, that's weird. Really? What? What's that about? Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm-hmm. But I will say I did learn how I should be treated with those times with my dad. Uh. So when I got older and I started to date, like you said, expectations, I had a certain level of expectations, mm-hmm. you know, and I also as a kid, I shouldn't have. But I listen to grown folks conversations. You know, I did. That's what we're supposed and, to do so we can learn. Yeah, and yeah. I would learn certain things. Like, you know, if, uh, like, a friend of mine likes to say, uh, shout out to Jay Van. He likes to say, if it's after 10, it's a sin. Mm-hmm. If the guy calls you after a certain amount of hours, you know, his mind might be somewhere else. Like, you may not want to entertain talking after certain hours, um, in the beginning, at least, mm-hmm. just so there's a level of respect there because mm-hmm. you get on the phone talking at a certain hour and the conversation can go another way. <laughs> so this is the respect game. But this Good is the one percent, though. This yes. is the one percent because I didn't entertain that stuff, though. Whenever I did that before I got married, mm-mm. my friends would complain about getting dick pics. I have never got a dick pic in my life. Me either. And I did date. Me either. I dated. Yeah. But I didn't get dick oh, pics because they knew I, I didn't I talked about this set. Back. Everybody, like, no, it wasn't. No, no like, but it, my first one, I'm 40 years old. Like, if somebody would, it, you see me, any body part of you, like, <laughs> down there, and I'm running for the hills. <laughs> if you're asking me, like, I, I was, um, I think I told you, all of you guys, of the um, incident when a guy was just like, uh, you, you want me to uh, please you down there? Like, like uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? And I was like, <gasps> Like it is so. Oh my god! You so need this- to you need to let everybody know that that is creepy when men do that. What? It's scary. I was like, this is like I I don't want to ever see you again. I I, did, I was really kind of I did contact him and t- and apologize to him because I think um, I did because I think I let him on in a certain type of way with the words that I was using. I was like, I don't want a relationship. I kind of just want to take things casually. Okay. Well, I didn't know that casually in 2021. Oh, it's different. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. But, but also too, so, uh, uh, here's like, a, you always got to remember his approach for any guy, the approach is usually there's a history with that approach. So they approach other people like uh-huh. that. And so it works. right. So you're the one that it, it, it doesn't work. work with. So it's, <laughs> it's hard to again. It's hard to place everyone as the same. Uh, you know, it's, you have to treat each one as a separate um, encounter. But how much audacity do you need to say that? Tiffany and I went out a mm-hmm. couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And it happened to me. I I didn't say or do anything. I wasn't overly sexual. I didn't do anything. And this man approached me and he told me things that I was shocked. And I I had to ask. I was like, no, thank you. But how often do Do you you ask? Ask. And how often does this type of stuff actually happen? And I was shocked. Yeah, because it's, it's different experiences for everyone. So you're one who doesn't respond to that. But then 
the person over here does respond to that. Mm-hmm. A so lot of women do. It, it, it seems is, dangerous. Yeah, but it, it just it's the same way where certain women um, come across a certain way with men, but the next woman will not. And so the, the same way men are different, women are different in that regards, but women are approaching or dealing with men based off of their experiences. Mm -hmm. And so men are just doing the same thing. Um, It's just, if they come across someone who doesn't like that, then you just tell them you don't like it, but it's, it's not where, it's not a situation where, where all men think like this or all men are doing this or whatever. And, or, I can't even say just um, speaking in general that he's a creepy individual. Yeah, that's why because I had for someone else, I he was creepy. I'm someone sorry. else likes that, right? So, but you don't like that. So it all comes down to what you like, what you don't like. But it's all a guessing game. The same way you don't know what I like, I don't know what you like. The mm-hmm. same way you know, none of us do until you start. Now, we all have a way that we want to be approached. Mm-hmm. in that manner to discover what we like, what we don't like. And some people are just more direct and straightforward um, than others. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in a fairy tale world, let's just say <laughs> that two individuals, after a man came up to him and she did not do anything that was sexual or anything to lead him on, she didn't say anything. He came out of the blue and he was 20 years younger than she was. Mm-hmm. And let's just say they, they all mixed. are. What happens after that then? Do you just go your separate ways and do it all over again yeah. tomorrow? Like, it's just, I just ple- don't a pleasure. It's that just, part. you know, you're just pleasing that person or it, they're both getting something out of it. In and 2021, then. that is the most dangerous thing I have ever heard of in my life. Uh, but you know, they, 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 they say that all the time with each generation. <laughs> That's, it's always like that. You know, when yeah. they made the comments like in the 70s, when the 80s came around, I'm sure they were like, what is going on with these people? Yeah. Why are they doing that? Each generation. Uh, in the 70s, we could have got away with that. Yeah, but the, the but, 80s, but that's a, it no. was a deadly disease that had come around, yeah, but, and that is no longer acceptable if you want to see. No, I mean a lot of people walk it's, around here with HIV, and they it's, uh, they take medication, and yeah, you know they get ready to have the HIV vaccine. You're absolutely right. So, I'm not saying any stigma or anything towards anyone who has anything like that. Right. I'm just saying even the emotional connection behind it all. But you're talking about you, people that don't have that emotional connection. It's totally different people. You're coming from your perspective and I'm just not learning this book. But I can say that they don't have a connection. It, it's just okay. Pl- it's just being you're pleasing it's each true. other. When That's what it is. When people unite in that way is a chemical hormone that is released with both. But they don't read all of that. It yeah. doesn't matter. That, 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 that is what happens. It is. That's why one or another becomes attached to that person or likes what they do in bed. Mm-hmm. It's that that whatever that hormone that is released. Mm-hmm. So why would you want to go around releasing that hormone with everybody and liking just a couple of things or one or two things that that person did? Like I'm, I'm not understanding mm-hmm. that in today's age and to my understanding people just connect and then go their separate ways and then connect and then go their separate ways and i'm i don't understand it they they take sex very casually some people Hmm. and there's just you know for for one person it could just be oh i'm bored it's something to do yeah. Yeah. And, and it's still but it's still all just exactly. subjective right so it's all still always just going to be based on opinion in, in and, the, opinion. and the way you choose to go about your life so it, it's, it's again going back to when I first started uh, talking is that appreciation for the individual um, you don't have to walk the same path I walk to be appreciated now, whether I decide to engage with you, that's different because that's the power of choice I have. Mm-hmm. So I can appreciate, I, I appreciate everyone for who they are as an individual. Whether I interact with you, that's a choice I make. Mm-hmm. So you live your life the way you want to live it. You know, I have all the respect for that. I don't live my life that way. So I don't choose to interact with you on that type of level. Mm-hmm. I choose to interact with people who are more aligned. Mm-hmm. with the way I live my life. And that's just all you, and that's really, to me, that's what you have to do. You have to find those. And sometimes you have to go outside 
your current circle because maybe the current circle is only w- those type of individuals. So to make that change, change is always met with apprehension and pushback because you're stepping into unfamiliar territory. But to make a change within your life, sometimes you have to step out of that and go into other domains and see, oh, is this what I like? No, I don't care for this either. Let me go over here. And again, you have to look at it from a point of view of just because I don't like this doesn't mean there's something wrong with that. I just don't like that. So I'm going to go to what I do like. And everyone over there, they think they're fine. And they look at you as, you know, if, if, and that's the issue with the judging. They look at you as like, well, what's wrong with that person? Why don't they like what we're doing? And you're like, why would they want to do all of those things? And I think that's always the struggle as a society we have. And that's what creates so much um, um, challenges amongst nations because one country says this is how things should be. And, you know, the U.S. is big at going into other countries and, quote unquote, creating diplomacy and all this other stuff based off the way we do it here. But that's how men are. They come in, they create, and then they say, oh, I'm not ready. Well, this whole world was, I mean, like, because we're living in a male society. So (laughs) we live in a male society. This is my world. So everything, to me, everything that is going on, it it does stem from the male society that has been created, you know. Um, But I'm I'm not saying, I'm just, let me finish. No, no, I wasn't wasn't about to disagree. I was going to say, again, it's people are just people. I think sometimes we put too much on the shoulders of a person or a group of individuals to make it appear as if they're supposed to always make the right decision. And who's saying the decision is right because I disagree. Right. I disagree. You might agree with it. You might be indifferent to it, meaning you don't care whether it goes right or left. You might agree as well. So it's now right. no. <laughs> who is... Who is right and who is wrong? You can't please everybody. Yeah. So in any situation, whether it's a man's world or a woman's world, nobody is ever going to be happy with all the decisions that are being made. But women are being treated like we are a buffet. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I told you that's both ways. Now I, I've realized it is both ways, but it's, I just want to. It, it only goes it, the both. woman's. It only goes the other way because women conform. Formed. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. That's the only because the man set the standard. There is no woman in real life. If she didn't have to be a sex worker, I guarantee you she wouldn't. She did it because she needed to. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So it's only because you conform what you feel like you need. Some women feel like, well, if I don't conform, I'm not going to get love. And that's why they conform. And those are the women who's messing it up for the 1%. I know. But like, I wanted to say this because it, when I see your face, it's like I, I so felt like your pain and everything because I can remember really like realizing the world that I was like in. I was so hurt for other people. I was like, oh, my God. Like I wanted it was more. I guess it's like a motherly instinct and nurturing for the human race. Like it went, it was really, really deep for me to grasp an understanding of what was going on because I have this whole motherly instinct to um, not fix people, but just like I'm looking deeper in, into the situation. And then I'm like, OK, so. We, the human race, we're, we have been through a lot of broken experiences, right? So, you know, I, it's, that's no fault of anyone. And, and then this is where we are. And then realizing, like, you know, sex, people having sex with one another, it was, it's different than my perception of, you know, that connection with people. It's just different. Our, like I was telling you, I was like, maybe, like, maybe we're more, I don't want to say more spiritual or not, but because we have not given ourselves a way to a lot of different entities and things. And we haven't allowed things to come in. Cause as a woman, we, we bring in things when we're having sex. It's like you, you're bringing on that person's personality, fears, love. It's, it's a whole different connection when you like go down deep into the science of it. But who the hell is going doing science about this shit but us? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, 
that you felt like your father made a decision based on fear? I feel like my decision is based on fear as far as how I handle and conduct myself around men in this world. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. You have to. You have to. You have to protect yourself. You do. No, I, I could say that I am very protective. I, I, th- I told you about just recently, um, you, I was dating this guy for about a year. You know, and I just knew to just like, just wait. Like, I just wanted to see where, because he was saying, oh, he was just so fucking perfect. Just saying, <laughs> just, it was like saying all the good stuff and like Netflixing with me and stuff. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, oh, just going to wait. And then I was, and then it happened. Like, I don't know if, and then sometimes I'm like, did I make it happen because I knew it was going to happen or did it just naturally, like, this was my instinct. But then he just got, he, I wasn't his friend at all. I, he just stopped. It was just. He oh, he ghosted? Gone. Hmm. Been there. I was just like, uh, I'm glad I did. You know what I'm saying? But so, like, I'm very protective over. And it's not like I was. Kind but th- to me, that that's part of. I think we've had this discussion before. That's trying to have ownership on an individual, meaning that. Is there anything wrong if an individual changes their mind? No. So I was just kind of waiting because I had my whole. But but that was right. So you're looking at it again. I I think we always get lost in that. We're always making these claims and these concrete um, decisions based off of our perspective, the lens we're looking through, and we're like, this is how things should go, because this is how I feel, this is the way I look at the world, this is how I see it, so this is how I believe everything should align. Anything that falls outside of those lines, then it must be incorrect or it must be wrong. Well, and that's I all I subjective. Didn't feel, I didn't feel like it was wrong or anything. What I was feeling was, you know, I was, he, I, I felt like so, if he so, had but, but only to the one key word and, the, and everything, every time you talk, I, I, that's I, what I, but this is because it's right, about me. It was right, about me. You're feeling this certain way. Yeah. You don't know what he might be feeling. You don't know what he's gone through. You don't know what, well, if that, if, if that, creates I thought, his I, decisions, if that was, the case for the closure hey tiffany i yeah, really got to know that, you but, but really it's, well it's for this easy year to but speak about that it, on, on the sidelines and say well this is what they should have done it's easy to say that you don't know, don't know how well, difficult that only, is it was a simple wait a minute for the individual. it was just it was just simple for me it was simple you know i i felt a certain type of way i felt like he can really kind of get any woman he wanted he was you know very nice looking he could get any woman he wanted i didn't want to be that num- another number under his belt so i had chose i was like well let me just really kind of get to know him as an individual and if we become friends and then it happens then that's fine you know but then i was questioning if he was really trying to be a friend a person that was a part of my life that's what i was questioning so it wasn't uh, i mean it was it's okay that it happened i'm not saying that he's wrong in any type of way i'm just like i was happy that i didn't give uh, have sex with this guy i was happy that i didn't have sex with him but because if i would have had sex with him i felt like then it would i would have got ghosted anyway we wouldn't have continued to be friends and that would more. and then that would have made and i don't like to say that that would have made me feel a certain type of way but honestly at the stage in my life where i am and i knew that that was wouldn't be good for me Mm -hmm. for that to happen so that's why i had chose but i'm not saying he wasn't a it was wonderful the time we spent together and all of that you know it was great but it just he wanted more or he wanted to um obtain what he wanted and when he thought it was no way possible of obtaining that then he went he went on his way you know (laughs) but i would have kind of liked for him to just be like you know yeah i I don't want you as no friend no more. I don't know. I was like, well, I guess we wasn't friends. I don't know. In my opinion, mm-hmm. women appreciate the truth yeah. more than anything else. I just felt like he was kind of the whole time. I was feeling like he was playing a game. That's all. Yeah. And it, and, and I was just gonna wait. But, and and so- closure is a part of the truth. You. I don't think that women feel like, oh my goodness, he didn't call me back. Uh, no, if if he was to say like, you know, this isn't working out. I hope that, you know, 
you find somebody that you connect no, with I better. No, no, not, not for your situation. Okay, well, so I'm just saying, just saying like, like in general, like can we still go? Can we go, uh, look at this movie that's coming out? But that's, that's what all I'm saying. Just like he just walked away without saying anything, and instead, if he was just honest, like I don't think this is gonna work out in that way. But you're back, cool. Like call me up if you want to watch a movie uh, or whatever the case is. Like, it's what's always. Wrong with that? Um, it's situational. It's always each situation is going to be different, uh, and to me, that's when you have to look at yourself. If you find in every situation is turning out to be the same, you're you're the common denominator within that. So then you have to really start looking at yourself and saying, okay, yeah, what am I pulling into ever. my circle? What what type of individuals am I dating? What where where do I find myself at? to where I'm meeting these same type of people that I'm not having success with. Well, I don't, um, I don't know what okay. success is. I can say that I meet so many different type of men, you know, from all ages. Um, so it didn't have nothing. I just thought I, he was good looking yeah. and I but, just... Uh, but, but I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just speaking in general. Oh, you know, we if there's another a topic. His, yeah, if, no, I'm saying... I don't have a history. No, but that's what I'm saying. Okay. If you have a history of that, that's when you had to start looking okay. at that. But, I'm, but going back to that... I don't think that, any of the women here have a history. History. Yeah, well, then if you don't have a history, then every um, relationship is its own relationship. Yeah. In, in my perspective, these people are meeting me for the first time and things are going away quickly. Yeah. Fast. Like, but, is this but, normal? But, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but but that's OK, because everyone everyone is different. It's, it, just because you meet I'm someone different. doesn't mean not everybody because everybody else that, that's come up to me is hey, how, what's your name? Da, da, da. It hasn't worked out. Very yeah. well. But again, it, it just depends on um, it's those that you're running into. That's just having to be like what you run into, what what whatever the energy is, or whatever the 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 area that you're in that has these same type of men, or maybe it's just that's what you're attracting at this uh, this age. I you know, that. as far as that's what you know seems to be attracted to you, you just step out of that. Like you you have the control to change the scenario, mm -hmm. and let, let's say you want a certain type of individual, then you go to those, you know, you frequent those areas with those type of individuals. Um, and that's how you change that. But it's, to me, it's always difficult to try to say that just because you ran into eight men and they all, in your opinion, were the same, that represents all. No, no. They were very different, but they all had a situation that was just like weird and unusual. They were all very different and of okay. all ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I was in a place in which I belong. I don't frequent places in which, you yeah. know, like-minded people are not there. Yeah. So we were in a space that was like-minded people. Um, just the approach was weird and different. And I was unfamiliar with what I was supposed to do. Like there was a couple of times I'm looking back like, where's Tiffany? <laughs> like, what am I supposed I to do? Yeah, she, she was somewhere else. And this man was telling me what he was going to do. And I was clutching my pearls. I was just like, no <laughs> way. That's not yeah. what you remember dating to be. It's different. Well, see, I was a saying? kid when I first started dating. So nobody came up to me and told me that they were going going to mm -hmm. do these things but, mm -hmm. uh, and so but uh, did he offer me did, what did he... i don't know he was offering everybody <laughs> community <laughs> but, but he kind of cornered me and because i'm i'm like new at this whole thing my whole thing i'm a kind of engaging I, I, he was engaging so, yeah. you just gotta i, I didn't feel moving. like i was engaging you got to do what you told me to do on in the, New York, I not know. in Vegas, in I Vegas. Know. Yeah, you got to post up. But see, they, <laughs> they came to me with they were very kind in the beginning yeah. and it went left that I, quick. And I was just OK. Like, so, yeah, I've noticed that, too. No, the whole the kindness. I don't I don't trust you the can kindness. go left, too. I was in the no, air what? and Tiffany was Wait, getting what? me out of the air Wait, when what? it went left. I was just like, yeah, yeah, it was, weird. It was bad. Weird. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it kindness Damn. too gets me to like, if you're too kind, like, I'm just like, that's who I am. No, I'm talking about mans. Oh. Mans. I, I, I'm looking at them like, mans? mans. Is that a word? I just made it up. I, I felt... <laughs> I felt like saying man's, but, like uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I kind of look at them like, okay, why are you being so nice? So that was the whole thing with that guy. Like, he was just super freaking nice. And Everybody I, was nice that night. And I knew it was something else. I don't know. I just... When you're too too extra nice, I need to see a little bit of. To me, it, it just comes down to once you know kind of what you're looking for, anything that falls outside of those lines, you just swipe past them. Ah. Just move past it. So, so I should have just walked away. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine see, to just walk listen, away. I'm from New York, and you don't turn your back from the opposer. You see what I'm saying? So, like, uh, but, it's you hard know, for you, me you, to walk away, and I'm you, just you like. Find, and it's different being a woman, too, because. Yeah, but you find the best man, way so for you to, for to deal to with away. it. So. You know, once you find when I don't like something, you find your way to get out of it. You know, mm-hmm. once see, you've you never that. been in the experience. This you said, well, thank you, no, thank you, f you. You're not that yeah. cute, no, anyhow. Uh, yeah, and I'm just like, bitch, you mad? Bitch, you mad? Yeah. Stuck up, bitch. Yeah. Like, I'm Are you mad, sir? I'm like, oh my god. I'm it's just trying like, to get to my car. You, like, it's no like you have to respond the right way. Yes, I know. Like, you I could be a yes, 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 very respond quickly. the right way. Yeah, and, and that's what I said. You I you figure out the way you respond, and but like you said, once you realize, okay, this is not what I want, you figure out the best way to get out of there so yeah. you can yeah. make it to where you need to make it to home or to a friend's house or whatever if especially if you're alone um, yeah no gas so, stations at night you just can't do that yeah we we just, just talked about, about that, that. Yeah. All the time yeah. because no it is stations. so it's I, I can truly admit it's a completely different um path that a woman walks compared to a man walks as far as um the level of comfort being out in the open right because men don't encounter the same thing that a woman would encounter being a woman Mm -hmm. from a man Mm -hmm. another man is not going to approach me a certain way because it's going to turn physical a man dealing with a woman he already um, some men would think they just already have an advantage just by nature um, so you have to find the best way to pull yourself out of that by any means necessary, you know, of course, with some um, some choice words yeah. so it doesn't escalate the situation so you can get out of there. Um, but, yeah, it, and those are, you know, kind of those one offs like those, that's that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. That's often. And, yeah. and no, no, that's what I was going to lead into, too, is like the safety, the protection that my like uncles and stuff gave me I don't sense a lot of that around me either um I just, it's kind of in my mind it's like it was like out of order like so with my oldest you know he is in this whole generation where everybody's supposed to be equal and so I have to I say hey walk your cousin downstairs Angel is my my niece you know so I'm like walk walk her downstairs and he's like why you know what I'm saying? And so then I have to explain to him. I'm like, do you think you're stronger than me? He was like, yeah, I'm pretty much stronger than you, mom. And I'm like, OK, so if you if you allow Angel to walk down the steps by herself and I'm not saying that this will happen to her. But sometimes men see a woman and see that as a weakness. And when you walking down the steps with her, that's a sense of security. And I really would like to bring that back into the this, black community. Yeah, I would like to bring that back because I don't see it a lot or feel that way a lot it has Mm -hmm. been lost and so he understood after i was kind of explaining to him like we we bring in life we we are the gateway from spiritual to being a human being a spirit from a human being i was like so honoring that you want to protect that i was like because we want to survive as a human race so we need to protect that woman in that certain way and then one day maybe women will understand how powerful and how um wonderful to have that ability you know what it is and value it more because we have lost the value we don't even honestly know the gift that we have as women so that's why it's that's why we're the one percent right because that's why we're the one when we go out with men if they don't like open the door or like walk on the car side of the road i'm kind of like who trained you? <laughs> you know, no, it's and really that's weird to me because uh, I'm used to something that goes different. Like my dad always had us, you know, on this side and he would walk it like just he would open the door and this and that. I am so used to that. I don't think I've ever touched a door and almost will wait for the next man to open the door because I'm just used to that. But and but again, that's 
our you know, experiences yeah, that and, a lot of people didn't which experience Which is it. all just subjective. If a man doesn't do that, it doesn't mean that's a bad man. Right. No, I don't but, yell at him but, if he but, does but it. I'm saying I'll grab the door myself, the, but usually... But there's an expectation based off of what you experience. And then when you think so, even when you go to like the the root of like men holding doors and all that, there was a time where they just um, felt like women couldn't do certain things. So the man was always going to be the one to do all these things. Uh, You know, they they used mean, you joke about it when they talk about just the difference in size as far as the brain, Uh, you know, there's six to ten percent the male brain is larger yeah uh, just because of the s- circumference I want to <laughs> you know what he do with it <laughs> no 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 that goes for something <laughs> else <laughs> it's a story but you gotta just think about you know all, all these things are you know things that is uh you know it's, it's like a program and so if your father or men in your family did these things then it's like okay this is kind of my expectation of what I think should occur when I interact with a man. Um, But the men you meet, who knows what their upbringing was? Who knows what they experienced? And if there's no right or wrong, just, you know, to me, there's... It, it, it doesn't show the um, the the thoughtfulness of a man, whether he holds a door, open up a car door, any of that thing, because you can have a man who does everything to the T as far as politeness Beat your ass and, it, yeah, <laughs> and smacking you around and doing all these things. And then you have a man who doesn't have those type of manners that you are uh, used to and loves you with every bit of himself and is ready to do anything thing at the drop of a dime mm-hmm. he just doesn't have those instincts to do this and do that Let's because that wasn't part yeah. of his life and it's a lot of people both men and women who grow up completely on their own and start having to be an adult and make adult decisions at young ages because every little bit of support that they had is gone mm-hmm. you know parents siblings um any type of um you know other um, family members and now they're just raising themselves and so it, to me is it, it, it always it always goes back to me have an understanding of everyone is just an individual Mm -hmm. and blocking out everything and just realizing this person I'm dealing with is a person. And if they approach things different than I approach it, it is okay because they are individual. Mm -hmm. Do I choose to continue to interact with this person? That's a choice I can make. Uh, And if I choose not to, I just choose not to. It doesn't mean there's anything of error with that individual. Okay. Yeah. So what, when I was bringing up the whole protection and then we went to the, you know, opening up the doors and things like that. Um, yeah, I do feel you cause you know, my door was opened up as well, but however, when I got in my marriage, that's not what he was used to. He was raised in a single parent home. So, you know, I, that was nothing that I ever would hold against him that, but of course I was taught not to hold yeah, I don't stuff hold against, ex- against exactly. Anything. So, you know, I would never hold that against someone, but what I was saying about just the protection, piece it's like if I am like at a bar and uh, I'm getting ready to walk to my car you know now what I do is I ask a, a man you know somebody that I'm feeling comfortable with I'm like can you please walk me to my car and make sure I get get to my car say if I'm going out by myself because I'll go back out by myself but when it gets dark you know you know I would like to feel safe and just walk to the car but I have noticed um in our community it's usually somebody from another race that will offer to walk me to the car um to make sure I get to the car safely but you know I just start asking people in our community I go and ask that black man can you walk me and he'll always be like yeah sure like it's no but he just that thought process is not there for him and you know why because his mama done everything she was the, she was the man and she was the woman in the household so they're not thinking you know about the safety of things like that until I'm going up to him and saying hey you know I really want to make sure I get to my car safe can you want me to the car you know so it's just dropping those little seeds in our community and then maybe he'll think about it and then next time he see a, a young woman getting ready to go 
um, to her car, maybe he will offer that, you know, so it's just, it's a lot of work that we just got to do in our community. It's not all the hope is not lost, but we just got to be a part of the healing process more so than like judging it in a way that you're not doing this or you're not doing that or whatnot. It's, we are all learning and trying to, you know, build together. So that's why I just accept people for who them are, who they are, but it takes a while to process it, you know. I, I have to process it. I have to go home. I have to think about it. I'm like, okay, where, where, are we, where are we? Or sometimes, like you said, Angel, I just shut up and not say nothing <laughs> and pause it. And she was like, hey, it's just like, what? Are you gonna say something? Like, why, why are you pausing? I was like, I'm just, I'm, I'm really taking it in. I'm taking it in. I have really, I wanted. I want to receive that information, whatever is given to me, and like really have a educated guess or like yeah. come back with, okay, maybe this is why. I don't want to judge it. Right. Yeah, right. but we need to wrap it up. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna ask about the unconditional versus conditional. We won't have to do part two. Yeah, because that's gonna be. It's going to be a long conversation this side against this. That's, yeah, because, you know, I think we, me and you kind of <laughs> believe that because, like, yeah. you can't tell me that. My baby that I pushed out, I unconditionally love that sucker. And I feel Both that of them. also. Like, I know what unconditional love feels like through my children. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, thank you so much, you two, for coming out. I think this conversation was super awesome. It was. Um, I think I want to say this was one of the best random thoughts that I've had so far. We will be a year in to doing Broad Belt Speaks in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. this is this random it's thoughts is the one yeah. and only that we have ever had guests. So I do appreciate oh, yeah. you guys coming aboard and wow. blessing us with your presence. This was a great conversation. But now that we're going to wrap it up, yeah. I'm going to just pass it on to Broadbill. So as always, uh, our email address is speaks 3 at gmail.com. Um, subscribe on YouTube at Broadbill Speaks. And always, we say it's just the click of a button the benefit is that you get notifications each time that we upload a podcast or one of the shows also to tiktok it's going to be broadbell speaks um our instagram is broadbell.speaks um so check both of those out and as always uh the number one podcast show in and the, the triad, triad. Uh, and also, we didn't mention this in the beginning, but we're both wearing our shirts yeah. from Vile City Designs. Uh, so I always want to make sure that we make that known. And you want to close it with? I am. So we close with, you know, as you say, I am, and then describe what you are. So right now, I am pleased. And that's all I got to say. So here you go. <laughs> I am interesting. Okay. I am excited about the future. Oh, I like it. That was good. Um, and I would say that... <laughs> what you? I was about to be silly. But, what um, was you going to say? <laughs> that I am happy to be a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You happy? We all, we all know he is happy to be a man. He says it every episode. Kurt knows. Kurt I knows. am a man. Yeah. I Kurt am a man. man. Yeah, it's that male energy, me, Kurt, and Nico. But, <laughs> but that's what you uh, want to say for me. No, no. I was going to say, um, I am um, thankful uh, for growth. Yeah, me too. Thank you for watching yes. Broad Bell Speaks. Thank Until you. next time, peace. And again, thank our guests. Yes, thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Yeah. Yeah. Having us, yeah.